your parents would be better off if you just weren't there because I can tell you from experience that is not even remotely the case um, um, don't let yourself believe that don't ever I mean I say that I, I know that, 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 that that's something that you go through but I can tell you from, a, from being a parent that, that that is not the case you know um, you, you need to cling to that and, and, and even if you really don't have that you've got to cling to the fact that, that no matter what God loves you from the standpoint of somebody going through it with them um, you have to realize that you can't fix them um, and that's very difficult for somebody like me because I'm a like I said I'm a person who sees a problem and I analyze and go after it and fix it and it no matter how much I went through um, no matter how much I did every time I turn around I'd realize okay well, that didn't work I screwed up again I made the situation worse or whatever but the most important thing you can do is you just gotta love them you know you gotta be there for them and um, the other thing you gotta gotta realize too is that this kind of a problem has nothing to do with ethnic backgrounds financial security how good your house is whether you come in a, up in a Christian home or whether you come in a broken homes and you're from the slums and you come from abusive parents or whatever this 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 thing is um, it comes it, it it affects everybody um, and also people that are trying to be with somebody you you got to realize that eating disorders whether it's anorexia or bulimia or the other extreme about um, my father-in-law and I were talking about this earlier an eating disorder can be you just can't stop eating you 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 become obsessed with eating I mean any any of those things it, it it's not about the food it really isn't that's just that's just a manifestation of, of the problem that's there and so when you when you try to fix that problem you're you're, you're putting ba a band-aid on a heart attack you you really it, it's it's you can't do anything about it. it it's not about the eating she's right you got to let that go as a father i look if she doesn't eat she's gonna die you know that's the way i looked at it so it's like you you have to eat okay maybe you don't eat a lot maybe you don't do whatever but you have to eat the problem was was eating wasn't the problem and then typical of kids you know the more you tell them you have to do this the more they say well then I'm not gonna do it um, or or they also like she said then they feel like okay I feel I've just failed again obviously so don't go after don't go after the symptoms go after the cause Yeah, I think the thing that I would say to the person going through it and the person coming alongside of that person is the same, is that there is hope. I don't care what you feel. The reality is there is always hope. There is always hope. That is what this night is about, is I, I desperately and... Uh, and all of us desperately wanted you to understand and it's so hard in this short amount of time uh, we could have spent days non-stop describing how dark and how horrible it was and for how long you can't imagine if you haven't been through it you can't imagine what it's like to be terrified every time you hear a phone ring is my sister gone horrible darkness beyond anything you can comprehend unless you've been there and yet we are here today not because of us because God is a God of hope in spite 
of anything we do. God is a God of hope. And he has a plan for you to prosper you. As dark as it seems, there is hope for you. There is hope for your loved ones. I love what mom said about you get healthy. This was a wake-up call for the whole family. We began to realize there is a lot more going on inside of us than any of us ever knew. And we needed to get healthy together. It was a journey that uh, we've been able to go through together and we're still going through together. There are still, uh, still times where life is hard and we get depressed. And, um, but we've, we've learned more about how to do life together. And I just want you to know, if you come away with nothing else tonight, know that there is hope and there is a God who loves you. Amen to that. Let me, let me close this portion with passages of Scripture. Most of us probably know it. could probably even quote it from memory. It comes out of 1 Corinthians 13. I'm going to read just a portion of it. But it's about God's love and his, his, his unfailing love and, and the hope that is wrapped up in that. And it starts, I'm going to start at verse 4. It says, Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy, it, is, it does not boast, it is not proud, it is not rude. It is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. That's God's love. That's his love that, that we can come to in him when, when we're going through these times or when we know others that are going through these times. We can come to him with this because... Paul ends up with this in verse 13 of this chapter. He says this, And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Let's pray. Father, we, we thank you for the journey that you have brought Leoni and Ed and Kim and Jason through, how you have watched over them, how you have brought Leonie out of this time and rescued her, how your spirit just welled up inside her and brought her to the place of realization that she needed to choose. And Lord, we're thankful that she chose you. She chose to be rescued by you. We thank you for a family that never failed her, that walked along with her. Thank you for the friends that came alongside her, the people that, that she could call, the people that, that prayed for her and continued to pray, the girlfriend that just threw her arms around her in that coffee shop that day, just knowing and being sensitive to your Holy Spirit. Lord, may we all seek to be that sensitive to your spirit and the different encounters that you might bring us upon. Lord, help us to not just dismiss this issue as some isolated incident, but to be, to be aware that many around us could be struggling. And to not just walk on the other side of the road like the, the three men did when the robber who was beat up on the road, but let us be the Samaritan who comes alongside, who picks up those folks and, and does whatever we can to, to dress their wounds. And yet, Lord, to not, to not get caught up in, in, in the guilt and things that we feel like we can't do enough. To realize we can't do it for these folks that are uh, in, in this position. And Lord, for, for those that are going through this, I pray that they realize that, that they have your spirit in them that can, that can help them to choose this day whom they'll serve. Lord, we just uh, thank you again for the fact that we have your word, your truth, that we have your weapon of prayer, petition, that we can, that we can take every thought captive of obedience to Christ. You have given us that ability, that tool in our toolbox to be able to do that. 
I pray that, Lord, tonight we have learned some things here. And we can take away some things to enrich perhaps our own lives and maybe the lives of others. And just be sensitive to where you want us to go, what you want us to do with this, Lord. To not just put it aside, but to take it seriously and to use it to your glory. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.